Let's go racing. Robertson from inside the five. He's returning kicks now with Rod Smart deactivated and not returning kicks for the second weekend in a row. Nathan Jones on the stop, 24 yard return. And here is Jake DeLome, who for the first time coming up this next February will be headed over to Hawaii. The offensive line, this is a group that has started every game this fivesome all season long. One of only five teams that can boast that. Steve Smith, maybe the biggest playmaker, game breaker in the NFL today. A toss to Foster. And Deshaun Foster is brought down from behind by Demarcus Ware. A gain of three. Let's look at the defense. And this is a team, Troy, defensively that has had a terrible time trying to slow down the running game of the opposition. They've struggled, Joe, here over the last four ball games. You're right. In the last three games, they've given up over 100 yards to three different runners. And if they're going to have any opportunity in this ball game today against Carolina, there's no way that they can allow Deshaun Foster to get going. Second down and seven. Foster again, same play. Foster over the right side again picks up three. Brady James on the tackle. Fowler in there as well, and it will be third down, a manageable third down for the Carolina Panthers, who this season are up over 42% in converting third downs. Yeah, actually, they've played better than what their NFL ranking is. They're 22nd in the league coming in offensively, but as you said, very effective on third down. They're also very good once they get down inside the red zone. They're number 22nd in the NFL, but not in my book. They're number 11 in the Aikman efficiency ratings. Don't kid yourself. Third down and four. Galam looks left, fires high, one-handed catch, incomplete. Out of bounds was Kerry Colbert, and it's fourth down. Great effort. The throw sailed on DeLome, and it's three and out in the first possession for Carolina. A little contact on the play, had a chance, tried to haul that one in, but a good job defensively for the Dallas Cowboys. Last week, due to some of the turnovers on the offensive side of the ball, they got behind early, but a good way to start a game out. Here's Jason Baker. Out of a line drive punt, Creighton will have a chance for a return. And until he runs into the body of Carl Hankton. He is their best special teams player and is one of the alternates for the Pro Bowl coming up. Let's go down to Pam Oliver. Happy Christmas Eve, Pam. Hey, thanks, Joe. It uh, may come as a surprise to some, but Bill Parcells took what had to be considered a very atypical approach to things this week. After last week's drubbing at the hands of the Washington Redskins, he responded this way. He didn't rail, no excess physical torture, and said he was calm, positive, and upbeat. Drew Bledsoe said that was exactly what the Cowboys needed headed into this game. Back to you. The soft, fuzzy Bill Parcells as the handoff is to Julius Jones. Jones gets it out to the 36, picked up three. You know, that's really been Bill Parcells' style going back even when he first came into the league as head coach with the with the New York Giants that it seems that when things are going well for his ball clubs he's very critical of them doesn't want them to get too full of themselves but when they're going through difficult times like they did this past week after the shellacking they took at the hands of the Washington Redskins he's the one who's trying to lift them up second and seven pressure from Buckner that pass dropped off for Julius Jones and Jones is met and dropped by Julius Peppers a meeting of the Julii. There's the offensive line. Pro Bowler Larry Allen, 10th time he's headed to Hawaii. Number two on the all time list in Cowboy history to Bob Lilly, the great defensive tackle, went 11 times. Terry Glenn was shut down last weekend by the Redskins. It's third and six. Passes through the hands of Creighton, and then Creighton gets popped by McCree. Three and out for the Cowboys. Well, Carolina that time does a good job. They go man to man on the end, and then they're going to have a free cover guy in the middle. You got Chris Gamble going against Patrick Creighton right there, as you said, Joe. 
on the hit that ball if it's led in front of Creighton would have been a real headache because a good coverage and a good call defensively. Matt McBriar drills it over the head of Steve Smith but into the end zone. So the Panthers will have it at their 20. That guy's name was Phil that was holding that sign up. DeLone with time down the middle. Prohl behind the defense. Ricky Prohl down to the 11. Well, I'll tell you what, Joe, the Carolina Panthers like the vertical passing game, and in order to pull that off, You've got to have awfully good protection up front because you're going to see Jake DeLome hold it and he steps up in the pocket a couple of times which gives Ricky Prohl time to get up the seam and how he's able to just run right through the side of that zone coverage with nobody going with him. That's something that has given this Dallas Cowboys defense some problems but a big play to start off the series here for Carolina and big plays have been crippling to this Dallas defense. Here's Deshaun Foster. Foster gets it down just inside the 10. We've got to point out that Anthony Henry didn't even make the trip. Bill Parcells seems totally frustrated by Anthony Henry, who was injured on the 30th of October, basically missed a month. He played some last week. It's been an abdominal problem now, as opposed to the groin. He's not even with the team here in Carolina. No, and you'd think that'd give him some problems with Steve Smith, obviously, the league's leading receiver, but for Ricky Prohl who's in his 16th season and is not the fastest guy on this team by any stretch of the imagination for him to be able to get deep early in this game that's surprising Julius Peppers right here Delong hands off down to the six a gain of four by Deshaun Foster how about Julius Peppers lined up as a slot receiver you know they've used him down here in the red zone at times in the past I mean this is an athletic guy he played basketball in college that tells you about all you need to know as far as his versatility he's got good size he's got quickness and he's got exceptional hands and so I don't know exactly who you put on him that can match him because even if you put a physical player on him he still has the ability to get up in the air and make the tough catch. It's third down and five. The Panthers can get a first down without getting it into the end zone and they'll call timeout. Third down and five when for Carolina trying to strike first a win and they are in the playoffs a win and a Tampa Bay loss and they win the South. Julius Peppers. Circled by Aikman. With the long look that way, fires and over the head of Mangum incomplete. It's fourth down. And the field goal unit comes onto the field. Let's go back to that 69 yard completion to Ricky Prohl. Yeah, you take a look at it. Keith Davis right here. He's the safety, and he's got to get as deep as the deepest receiver. And as you're going to see, Ricky Prohl just runs by him. Now, he thought he was going to get some help by the linebacker, Scott Shanley. Now, Shanley could not keep up with Ricky Prohl and that's what created the big play. 24 yard try here by Casey. And Casey remains perfect at this short distance. The completion to Prohl 69 yards second longest catch of his long career set it up three nothing Panthers 10 5 left in the first quarter. And again, the Cowboys fall behind. This is Tyson Thompson from inside the 10. Good head of steam. And a good return, but he lost the football. And now the scrum to see who came away with it. Look for a second like Thompson had a shot to get it back. But this could be. A killer turnover for the Cowboys after the Carolina Panthers just got on top. And it looked initially to me, Joe, that when Thompson did fumble, that it was Carolina who was able to get in there first. Obviously, at the bottom of the pile right now, what usually happens, whoever comes away with it, regardless of who initially had it, and it looks like it's going to be Carolina's ball. Still fighting in there for the football, but Carolina has it. Tyson Thompson, the rookie from Irving, Texas, puts it on the ground. Well, and this is a concern for Bill Parcells, and that's one of the reasons why Tyson Thompson 
has not played more as a running back within the offense. He's uncertain that he can depend on him. Well, this is why when you get an opportunity to get the ball to your offense in good field position and then you lay it on the ground and now you give the ball right back to Carolina with a chance to get more points. Kent Rasmussen made the hit to force it. Tufts came away with the ball for Carolina. We saw that score flash across. Washington has an early seven to nothing lead. Here's Carter. Touchdown. First of his career. Now Drew Carter who got a chance last week to play for the first time originally a fifth round pick a year ago has had some knee surgeries unable to get onto the field had an impact last week initially in that game now he comes right back he's got some size to him and Aaron Glenn is not very tall and as you see because the ball was up Drew Carter able to go up and make the play and Aaron Glenn was unable to Carter is 6 3 200 pounds second year player from Ohio State. And it's 10 to nothing. They fake a reverse. And Thompson, who just fumbled moments ago, gets it out to the 20 inches beyond. And that's where Dallas will have the football. Let's go back to that touchdown completion to Drew Carter. Well, you're going to see Roy Williams here in the middle. He flattens out a little bit. Now, I don't think Aaron Glenn thought that he was going to get some help from Roy Williams. But you see Jake DeLome, he pumps to the left to try to open up that space and when it first came out of Jake DeLone's hands I thought the ball hung up in the air but again because of the height advantage of Drew Carter he was able to go up over Aaron Glenn. So here are the Cowboys again playing from behind and again more pressure it's Peppers the sack of Drew Bledsoe and it's more of the same. Troy this is a team now that's playing from behind their tackles aren't playing well they're not able to run the ball. An immobile quarterback, it's a bad combination for Dallas. Same combination that we saw last week against Washington, and you get behind, and they're not going get to get into a passing game this early, but you still got to be able to drop back and throw the football. Now, nobody picks up Julius Peppers. He's able to come up inside. Drew Bledsoe fortunate that they blew the whistle. He has put the ball on the ground, and he did again there. Eight and a half sacks now for the Pro Bowler Julius Peppers. Julius Jones carries it back near the original line of scrimmage. Picked up eight. It'll be third down and long for Dallas. This is what the Cowboys are facing. The last 10 weeks, this Carolina defense across the NFL, first in yards per game allowed. Opponent, opponent passers rating is first in the NFL. Takeaway second, sack second, only eight touchdowns allowed by the opposition over the last 10 weeks. And Dallas is faced with third down and 10 down by 10. Bledsoe needs time. They roll him out to try to buy some. And he's going to air it for Glenn. Terry Glenn gets shoved and still makes the catch. A huge completion for Dallas down inside the 30. They threw the flag. Glenn made the catch and the question is who is the interference against Glenn or McCree. Wow. Well I didn't see that at the time that it happened. I thought that was going to be an easy call for the officials on Carolina. They moved Bledsoe out to try to keep the defense from Keehan where he's going to be in the pocket. Now Terry Glenn got right by him now the left elbow left arm is where they're saying he pushed off. But there the two fouls on the play pass interference. Defense number 27 that penalty's declined personal foul roughing the passer defense number 96 helmet to helmet contact 15 yard penalty added to the end of the play first down that's on Al Wallace on the personal foul roughing Drew Bledsoe yeah here's a better look on that Al Wallace will be coming into the screen after Bledsoe lets go of the football. You see he comes with the crown of the helmet and although he didn't try to hurt him by any means that's what the officials are looking for. When you come with the crown of the helmet that's going to get called. Now on the other side McCree never turns around. And so when there's contact made due to the underthrown ball to Terry Glenn.
because McCree never looked to make a play on the football, it was an easy call for the officials on pass interference. It's a 51 yard completion to Glenn plus the 15 yard penalty and a toss to Julius Jones running left. The penalty flag is down in the secondary as Julius Jones picks up one Witherspoon on the tackle. But a flag is down. What a big moment. Defense, 12 men on the field. Five yard penalty. First down. For what a turnaround in a matter of seconds and an opportunity here for the Dallas Cowboys to get back in this game and get something going offensively. Defensively for the Carolina Panthers. Peppers is headed to the Pro Bowl. The linebackers, they were disappointed. Morgan isn't going. And then the secondary is good. They were shocked that Ken Lucas wasn't named as a pro bowler. It's first and five. Julius Jones. Gets it down near the seven, picked up two. Mike Rucker, the first one there for Carolina. Second down and three. Those Carolina defense, as we showed just a moment ago, the way in which they play here over the last 10 ball games, arguably as well as any defense in the National Football League, very stingy, very good down in the red zone as well. They give up the big play, which got Dallas down here, and now they're hoping to come out of this only giving up a potential field goal. It's a blitz. Second down and three. Julius Jones. Touchdown Dallas. So the Cowboys answer. You know, Joe, Julius Jones, they've been trying to get him on track for pretty much the entire season. Last week, he was able to get a 51-yard run, which certainly helped with his confidence. But he makes a move here that he really has not shown much of here in the last several weeks. He started to the outside and was able to burst through the hole and get into the end zone. I think that's something that's been lacking, some attributed to the high ankle sprain that he suffered during the middle of the year. It's a three point game for Dallas. And any one of their running backs, their first rushing touchdown since November 20th against the Lions. Julius Jones gets it. The Cowboys are back in it. John Bonn and Casey field goal is a difference 10 7 Julius Jones caps it after that big 51 yard completion to Terry Glenn. Condit really got into this one and Robertson will take a knee back to the touchdown to make it a three point game. You know one of the things that I've always been impressed with with Julius Jones is his ability to make the first guy miss and his burst and that's what's been lacking here over the last five six weeks a lot of criticisms to the offensive line but the running back has to be able to set up a lot of those blocks and then when you've got wide receivers like Terry Glenn getting down the field and blocking safeties that certainly helps a good job by Terry Glenn and also Julius Jones showing a little bit of the burst that we've not seen in recent weeks game break coming up first down for Carolina from their 20. Deshaun Foster runs into a wall lost a yard let's go for a game break here's JB hey Joe opening drive for the Redskins Mark Brunel hooking up with Santana Moss the pro bowler 17 yards wide receiver screen he takes it in 7-3 skins Atlanta playoff hopes hanging by a thread Michael Vick play action four yarder to Justin Griffith 7 nothing Falcons over Tampa Bay back to Joe Buck. Thank you JB again if Carolina wins today and Tampa Bay loses the Panthers win the NFC South. Second down and 11. DeLong with all day throws high and it's incomplete. Out of the reach of Brad Hoover the fullback. It's third down and 11 and let's go down to Pam Oliver. Hey there, Joe. All Drew Bledsoe wants for Christmas is uh, to not leave the stadium in a body bag. He joked about that with me before the game. In all seriousness, though, Bledsoe hopes the Cowboys' offensive game plan, which he said will feature uh, plenty of draws, screens, and chips, will be enough to keep the Panthers 
pass rush at bay. He said, they'll be coming after us, and we're going to have to show that we can drop back and pass. They had a little something of everything on that last scoring drive, Joe. All right, Pam. Well, on that last big completion to Terry Glenn, they had to roll him out to his right and put him on the move to try to get him out of harm's way. It's third down and 11. Where is coming? The ball's out. Carolina able to fall back on top of it. Jordan Gross comes away with a football, but a punt is coming, and Demarcus Ware, the rookie, comes up with a big play for the Dallas defense. Well, they've been wanting to get Demarcus Ware back on track for a number of weeks. He came into the league really on fire. Four sacks, first six weeks of the season. Hadn't done much since, but so far early in this game, doing a good job getting pressure on Jake DeLome, and what a heck of a job by right tackle Jordan Gross recovering the fumble. So the punt from Baker. Creighton waits for it, takes it at his own 39, and goes nowhere. A penalty flag comes in. Just a two yard return. Benny Churchu on the tackle for Carolina, and a flag is down on that brief return. During the return, illegal block in the back, receiving team number 58. 10 yard penalty first down. Well, I tell you Bill Parcells he, he obviously isn't happy right now with the kickoff return team when Tyson Thompson puts the ball on the ground and now the punt return team when it looks like they're going to get the ball at midfield all of a sudden they have a penalty that backs them up and you know you get into this type of game with playoff implications on the line and certainly if the Cowboys are going to get into the playoffs so often those games are determined based on who has the better field position. Look at the Giants on top of the Redskins 10 7. Toss to Julius Jones another big run Jones is out near midfield and they'll mark him at the 50 a 19 yard run for Julius Jones who was getting some traction. Pretty good job there by this offensive line coming and doing the kick out they're going to run some people on the pole. You see there that opens up that hole and I tell you Julius Jones I'm sure he's gotten tired of hearing Bill Parcells talking about his ineffectiveness as a runner and so far in this ball game he, he has looked like he's as healthy as he's been in a while. Look at that move. This is vintage 2004 Julius Jones. I mean this is like the rookie was running last year he looks fantastic. Well I've got to believe Joe that the high ankle sprain that he had in the middle of the season has had a big impact on his ability to run the football because certainly at the end of last season he showed tremendous burst and poise as a runner early in the season this year going back to even the preseason he had that as well. He just hasn't been the same runner coming off of that injury but today it appears that he's gotten some of that back. Second down and one and why not stay with a hot hand and Jones has a first down inside the Carolina 40. I know Bill Parcells when you when you ask him about Julius Jones or heck when you ask him about anybody for that matter as far as whether or not they're hurt or how injured they nobody's are. Nobody's hurt. Nobody's hurt. Everybody's 100 percent. And he said look Julius Jones like all the great backs has got to learn to create plays even when they're not there. And I agree with that to a point. But the offensive line also has to do a good job of creating some space. Barber comes in Jones checks out first down. Bledsoe with some time. Fires too high and it's intercepted. Looking for Terry Glenn and it's Lucas who comes away with a pick. Glenn was open and Bledsoe missed him. You know we heard Pam talk about what the Cowboys were going to try to do as far as their blocking schemes to give Bledsoe some time. They're going to run this half roll and teams do this because it really shores up the protection inside. You see the pocket that Bledsoe was provided. Now it's just a matter of getting the ball to the right guy down the field. Throws another high ball over the head of Terry Glenn and it results in the interception. You know, on the other side of that you got Keyshawn Johnson everybody was focused on Terry Glenn and he runs that intermediate crossing route and Bledsoe was going to Terry Glenn the entire way and because of that he never saw Keyshawn come free. Sixth interception of the year that was a gift for Lucas. Toss to Foster. 
And the run defense, at least here in this first quarter, has looked a lot better. And Demarcus Ware, the rookie, who has been frustrated by his play over the last two months and is tired of hearing about hitting that rookie wall, saying, well, you'll be better next year and you're running out of gas, said this week, I want next year to be now. I don't have time to wait around for 2006. Yeah, and you know what? He is tired. I mean, this has been a long year for these rookies that have been playing all season like he has. But I like his approach this this week in saying that that's not an excuse that he needs to play better. Second down and 11. DeLong with all day fires high again. Wow. We've seen a couple of throws sail out of the hand of Jake DeLong. You and I were down on the field before the game. There is some wind here, but we've seen a couple of throws just carried by the wind and thrown out of bounds. You know, he has a little different style than what we see from most quarterbacks in today's game. Really, this entire passing game is different from what we're used to seeing. So much of the West Coast offense and the horizontal passing games, whereas this Carolina team, they like to get the ball down the field. And so with that, you're not always going to have some clean looks. It's third down and 11. High snap and a handoff to Foster. They go nowhere and this crowd is letting the Panthers offense have it. Look at that Washington game. The Redskins now back out in front 14 to 10. You know I think when you look at the decision there by the Carolina Panthers I mean that's John Fox and that's a philosophy and a style that has allowed him to win a lot of football games here with the Carolina Panthers. It's what got him to the Super Bowl just a few years ago and they're going to rely on that defense. Now the Cowboys have created some big plays already early in this game, but he's going to bet that this defense is going to hold up and they're going to give the ball back to their offense with better field position than they had there. Baker hangs it high and a fair catch is called for by Terrence Newman. Good field position for the Cowboys and if you look at Drew Bledsoe who's coming off that interception and then you look at his quarterback rating by month starting in September when he was red hot. It has been a steady downward spiral month to month to where in December and a lot of it has to do with a lack of protection that he's had by his offensive line. He's down to 67 point one during this month and it's not just this year Joe it goes back really over the last four years those numbers are consistent with how he has played in recent seasons. Not all of it's on the offensive line. Some of it is the fact that Drew Bledsoe has not gotten the ball out of his hand. They move Bledsoe and he throws to Keyshawn Johnson. And Johnson has 11 and a first down. And we talk about some of the things that the Cowboys are doing within this offensive scheme. They know that they need to keep Drew Bledsoe upright. And so we're going to see some of the screens. We're going to see max protection. We're going to see the half roll. And still having said that. Andre Gerard who's filling in for Marco Rivera at right guard still allows Brenton Buckner to get up the field and put a hit on Bledsoe. Under a minute and a half to play in this first quarter 10 7 Carolina. Cowboys have come alive. A blitz from Carolina the Cowboys run away from that blitz and again Julius Jones breaks free for a moment and picks up five. Looked like that play was going nowhere and Jones ends up with five yards in his pocket. Well, I know that this Cowboy organization has been waiting for Julius Jones to have a breakout game. I mean here we are in week 15 and they've been saying it each and every week that this is the week that we hope Julius Do Julius Jones creates plays. Maybe today is the day at least here in the first half he's done a good job. Second and five. Another blitz. This time it's Kendall Moorhead making the stop and a penalty flag comes in. A loss of one on the play. Tell you it's hard to imagine though when you talk about this Carolina defense and and what they've got. They really don't have any weaknesses on that side of the ball. I mean they're solid across the defensive front. Two of the premier pass rushers with Mike Rucker and Julius Peppers. Yes they lost Chris Jenkins again this year early in the year. But Jordan Carson's has done a heck of a job and they've got a good secondary to go with it. Cowboys do not have to snap it. They picked up the flag and we are finished. With one quarter. On the first quarter. Quarter ran out. He was surprised. It's third down and six. We begin the second quarter. The snap was low. Letzel hits Terry Glenn. And Glenn's got a first down inside the 30 down to the 26. 
a 20 yard completion and that time a perfect throw from Drew Bledsoe after getting a bad snap from Al Johnson. Cowboys do a pretty good job. They bring three receivers to the short side of the field. They run Creighton on a drag shallow and then they're able to get Terry Glenn up in the void that was created because of the fact that Creighton ran the short drag and that was the weakness of that defense well executed by the Dallas Cowboy offense. They work on Terry Glenn over on the sideline after that 20 yard catch. Here's Julius Jones. He has got a burst. Today he's down to the 21 picks up five and let's go down to Pam Oliver. Hey Joe Tuton Reyes has been getting some medical attention from the trainers on the sideline. In fact he missed the Panthers last offensive series. The diagnosis on him so far it's a sprained left toe. Meanwhile linebacker Dan Morgan has gone back into the locker room for evaluation. They're saying he has an injured shoulder. Back to you. All right Pam. Meanwhile the Cowboys are moving the ball second down and five. Glenn looking at his right hand or wrist on the sideline. Another blitz from Carolina Julius Jones down to the 14 yard line gets seven and another first down for Dallas you and I did the game last week we've done I don't know four or five Cowboy games all year we have not seen Julius Jones look like this in 2005 no and I think Carolina's a little surprised by it as well I mean they're not accustomed to seeing people come in and run the football the way that Julius has here in the first half but the offensive line who much line over the course of this season doing a heck of a job as far as getting a body on a body and creating a little bit of room for Julius Jones will try the left side and pound it down inside the 10 he's up over six yards of carry in this first half against the Carolina defense which comes in ranked number four in the league against the run I think you look at this first half particularly the first quarter and some of the mistakes that Dallas had and Carolina able to jump up on them 10 nothing. You know it looked like it may force Dallas out of what they wanted to do mixing up the running game trying to take some shots down the field. But the fact that Dallas was able to go right back down and get a touchdown. Now they're back into the mode that they don't have to try to start forcing the ball throwing it. Second and five they hand it Jones makes a move at the line of scrimmage and gets it down close to the six about a yard and a half shy of a first down. So Jones will come out. Barber will come in. And Terry Glenn is still standing on the sideline. On third down. Two and a half. We'll call it three for Dallas. Handoff is to Barber. Barber ran into Chris Draft, picked up one, and it's fourth down. Well, that was a heck of a job by Chris Draft stepping up into the hole and preventing the first down. You see him scraping off the side here, and the fullback, Polite, just runs right by him. And because of that, Chris Draft is able to come in behind that block and make the tackle and keep the Cowboys from picking up the first down. 24 yard try here from Cundiff to tie it. It's a 10 10 game. Cundiff's confident that that thing's going to stay up there as he approaches it. This is Robertson from inside the five. And he can't make it to the 25 as he was hit downfield by Roy Williams playing special teams. He does it all for Dallas. It's 10 10 on Christmas Eve. There's Steve Smith. The Panthers and Jake DeLone have not thrown his direction today. Play action from DeLone. Smith right on cue. Makes a move, stays on his feet, and gets it out to the 43 yard line. Brought down by Fowler. A completion of 19 yards. And the reason that they had not gone to Steve Smith prior to this route is because the Cowboys have been doubling him every single play. Now, this is the route that you can take advantage of that roll coverage. You come up the field, push on the corner, snap it off to the inside, and that's the hole inside the corner and in front of the safety. Number one in the 
the NFL in catches, yards, number two in touchdowns to Marvin Harrison. Not active today for Indy up in Seattle. Handoff is to Foster, picks up five. Now the Panthers are moving it, and here's JB with a game break. Hey, Joe, Steve Smith is indeed the guy, but Santana Moss, not a bad year. Pro Bowl, as a matter of fact, play action by Brunel. Look at the adjustment by Santana Moss on this ball right here. Nice move, 59 yards to pay dirt. Skins control their own destiny up over the Giants right now by four. Eight minutes left in the second. Back to Joe Buck, Troy, and Pam. All right, JB, 936 and counting. Second down and five left here in the first half. Carolina hands it. Foster runs into DeMarcus Ware. He's shown up big already in this first half. A gain of only one. It's third down for the Panthers. You know, we talked a little bit about what they're doing to Steve Smith to try to keep him from getting involved. And as you're going to see, here's the safety, Keith Davis. Now they're trailing Terrence. Newman is on him as well and so the Cowboys know that that's who they want to get the football to everybody in the league knows that that's who they want to get the football to and they're doing everything they can to keep that from happening but when you roll two guys to stop one there's other areas of your team then that get exposed third down and three the Cowboys came across early Carter makes the catch inside the 35. He already has a touchdown today and you can see that Drew Carter is going to reap the benefit of all that attention that the Cowboys are paying on Steve Smith. Yeah they were hoping that Kerry Colbert would benefit from it all season long but he Outside. hasn't been able to take advantage of that. Number 56. Phillies decline. First down. And so now Drew Carter is able to because when you're rolling to Steve Smith that means for the most part you're going to get one on one coverage to your opposite receiver. As we said, Drew Carter came in last week, created some big plays, has already in this game had some big plays. He's the fastest guy on the team, about a step faster than what Steve Smith is, and that's why he's able to get some of the separation that we've seen. That one good for 18 yards, first down, a toss to Deshaun Foster. Not much of a factor in this first half, trying to get extra yards, picks up a yard and a half. First guy there was DeMarcus Ware. Again, we look back and we highlight the play of this defense and the two safeties. First, Keith Davis on the completion of Kroll. Then Roy Williams on the touchdown throw to Drew Carter. That's the Carolina touchdown for Dallas. They're happy to get one from Julius Jones, who's had a very good first half. It's a 10-10 game. But now Carolina with the ball inside the Dallas 32, second and eight. Just get it away and a toss to Foster. Deshaun Foster ran away from Greg Ellis, who had an early shot at him, picked up two as Brady James eventually made the stop. Ellis had a free shot and whiffed. You know, Deshaun Foster, this is a great opportunity for him. You know, he came into the league, and in his first season, he blew out his knee, and a lot of people weren't certain that he was even going to come back from that injury and play again, and that's when they picked up Stephen Davis. And he's been playing in the shadow of Stephen Davis ever since. Well, Stephen Davis, now that he's on IR, this is not so much an opportunity for Foster to show that he can play in this league, it's a chance for him to show that he can be the every down back because injuries have limited his career. Third down and six. DeLong fires looking for the end zone and overthrows his receiver Carter. So to this point, Jake DeLong has looked more in Drew Carter's direction than he has Steve Smith. This time he overthrows him. And it's fourth down. Yeah, and that's the time that maybe he should have been looking for Steve Smith. And you know again he's got two guys covering him but when you run that deep cross he got to the middle of the field and when you're going to roll that's the weakness and Steve Smith was able to get into it you know and Jake DeLong told us that whenever Steve Smith is singled I'm throwing him the football well right now the mindset for Jake is that he's getting doubled and so he's looking elsewhere but just because two guys are on him it doesn't mean that he can't get open 47 yard try from Casey is good on the Carolina defense. Last three times they've had it. He's already fumbled once today. This is Tyson Thompson. He gets hit after crossing the 20. 
And we've seen already as the Cowboys have the ball go back on offense the different things that Dallas will try to do to buy Drew Bledsoe time to get the ball down the field and so far in the first half a lot of it's worked. Yeah it really has. I mean they've done a good job. They're, they're moving them around outside the pocket a little bit. They're trying to get the ball out quick. They're keeping guys in to max protect. That's really the key. And the other real key that's helped them as I said they got down 10 points and they were able to get back into the ball game to where now they can they can stick with what they came into the game wanting to do and that's be balanced. Terry Glenn is back on the field. Bledsoe fires and for the first time his big tight end Jason Witten is on the receiving end nine and a half yard completion to Witten and Jason is just short of a first down. You know and I think when you talk about Jason Witten in the season that he's had he really started the year out very well. He's an excellent tight end one of those athletic guys that can really run. But when Flozell Adams got hurt at left tackle, it really changed the complexion of Jason Witten's game. Maybe cost him a berth in the Pro Bowl because then he became a blocker. Second down and one, and Julius Jones appears to have enough for a first down. He does. You know, everybody knows Bill Parcells' public side and what he does in press conferences, and he likes to spar with the media, and he can be <laughs> rough on guys, and you know what he says to players when they come off to the sideline after making a mistake. But he has also gone out of his way to baby in a way not in a bad way but a good way Julius Jones he told us he said look I've got to start him I've got to keep his confidence up and I've got to put him in a position where he knows I'm still behind him and some of that babying and staying in his corner is paying off today as Jones crosses the 35 out to the 36 because he looks like a different back here against Carolina. Yeah I think Bill Parcells I mean he tries to know what each player needs in terms of trying to motivate him and you know in his opinion Julius Jones is a guy who's struggling right now a lot of people have been critical of of his season and him not running the football particularly well and and Bill Parcells is trying to build him up I mean Bill Parcells is certainly frustrated that they haven't run the ball better but he knows being critical or being tough on Julius isn't the right approach with him second down and seven Bledsoe throws and the pass broken up that was Witherspoon who knocked it away from Keyshawn Johnson. Third and seven. Keyshawn Johnson here coming off the ball. And, you know, as we've talked about before, I mean, he's not a guy who's going to really create a lot of separation with speed. He's not a guy who they're going to use to go down the field. These are the types of routes where he's generally pretty good. Now, you've got Will Witherspoon who's waiting on him. Drew Bledsoe led him into that one. A good job by Keyshawn just keeping that ball from being intercepted. Third and seven. They fake the handoff and throw to a wide open Keyshawn Johnson. He is into Carolina territory, a 16 yard completion. There have been two big third down conversions in this half by Dallas. This is the second of the two. And when you can give Drew Bledsoe some time and they run a little play action there that afforded him a little bit more. Torrin Tucker actually did a pretty good job there on Mike Rucker pushing him down inside which again gave Bledsoe the time and he may be 35 years old but he can still throw the football as well as anybody when he has time to step up on first down Bledsoe has time again but the ball is batted down Julius Peppers. And that big body got in the way. The playoff picture, Jim. Playoffs? Yeah, thanks. That's Jim Mora from a few years ago. I'm sorry, just something that makes us laugh because you just can't playoffs? say the word thanks. You just can't say the word playoffs without thinking about former Saints and Colts head coach. Seattle right now the number one seed. Chicago in the driver's seat for the number two spot. The Giants, the Panthers. There's three teams after Seattle all vying for that first round by Barber on the toss Witherspoon rides him down. You know, we were talking to John Fox the other day and as well as this defense has played he said Will Witherspoon has been the most consistent performer of the bunch. You're going to see him as he attacks this line going downhill and for a linebacker that's really the key. He's able to run through the block of right tackle Rob Petiti and get to the ball carrier on the other side of the line of scrimmage. When you talk about the great linebackers and I'm not suggesting that Will Witherspoon is a great linebacker but when you talk about those types of players they're always playing downhill. Third down and 16 now they roll Bledsoe out to his left. 
He's got nowhere to go. And it's fourth down. He's rolled to his right, to his right, to his right. Now they tried to take him out to his left, and John Fox pats him on the backside and says, Thanks for not throwing it. It's fourth down, and here comes a punt. You know what? And in my opinion, that's a good possession right there for the Dallas Cowboys. Sometimes you get it in your mind that you have to go down and score points, but you know, that's this drive began on the 22 yard line for them to put together a few good first downs, recreate field position, and now let their defense go play. Matt McBriar hits a ugly one, but it takes a good cowboy bounce. And it was first touch out at about the six. Panthers have the football. See big number 68, Mike Wall, the left guard, former Packer, is headed to his first Pro Bowl. Five year, $25 million deal, and he's been worth every penny. And Deshaun Foster runs right through the hole he created, picked up six. And you talk about Mike Wall going to the Pro Bowl for the first time. Jake DeLome also got voted in for the very first time. In fact, has never even been to Hawaii. This will be his first trip over to Hawaii, and that's always a great honor. And I know he's looking forward to it, and as is all the other players that got selected. And of course, Steve Smith, he's the other one on the offensive side of the ball that's going to be going over to Hawaii representing the NFC, and that didn't come as a surprise to anybody. Second down and four, and they toss it. Foster, and he is hit with a perfect form tackle from Keith Davis, but a first down. Davis, who was bothered by a hit last week, injured his left shoulder, was there, and he didn't back down from this at all. No, in fact, Bill Parcells, he refers to, to Keith Davis as a cannonball. I mean, and sometimes that gets him in trouble in coverage because he's always so quick to want to come up and hit somebody. But in the run game, when you've got a guy like that, that's a real asset for your defense. Approaching the two-minute warning, DeLong keeps it, throws it over the middle. Incomplete. Aaron Glenn looks to the heavens and says, are you kidding me? You know, again, and here's the reason, Joe, is they continue to put Terrence Newman over Steve Smith with safety help. And here's the safety here. And so they don't want to try to force anything into Steve Smith. And so then the weakness is trying to get the ball down the middle. Now, if you're going to get the ball down the middle and you've got a defender trailing, you've got to put a little bit of air under it. And that was an opportunity for an interception for Dallas. That is some Christmas Eve angst on the part of Aaron Glenn, who has four interceptions this season. Second and ten. Malone just got away with one. To the sideline and incomplete for Carter. Hit by Jock Reeves, who's getting better and better. Second year player out of Purdue, and he was there defending and made the Carter thought about coming down with his ball. And Jock Reeves, he's playing because of the injury to, to Anthony Henry, who did not make the trip. Jake DeLome a little late on that throw. If he's able to get it down, then Drew Carter's able to run through the ball on his way to the sideline. It's third down and 10. 204 left. Play action DeLome under pressure underneath. Hits Goings and Nick Goings still going. First down. Got out of the tackle of Aaron Glenn and gets a big first down for Carolina. Glenn had him. Couldn't bring him down. And Carolina at the two minute warning gets a big first down. It's the ticker will keep you updated with up to the second stats. First down with a minute 50 left in this first half. Carolina, two timeouts left. All day for DeLome and Hoover downfield. First down, Carolina just outside the Dallas 40. You know, you take a look at the last play with Steve Smith. He's running. They put him in motion in order to try to avoid the jam. As you can see, two guys still are with him. But look at what he does at the end of that play to free Hoover. Or excuse me, Nick Goings. That's when he puts a big hit on Brady James. And Steve Smith, he's just one of the more complete receivers in this game. Atlanta and Tampa Bay tied at 14. That ball is out. They're ruling it a fumble, and the Dallas Cowboys have it. Knocked out by DeMarcus Ware. 
and Ware has had an all-world first half. The rookie has played brilliantly here in the first half in Carolina. Well, he certainly has, Joe. I mean, Julius Jones and Demarcus Ware, guys that have been struggling for the Dallas Cowboys, and that ball was out. With Jake DeLome trying to make the throw, and the question becomes, is his arm moving forward with the ball in his hand? And in my opinion, it did not, and this is going to be under Booth review. Well, right now, Carolina is taking a timeout to give the booth another chance to think about it, but from the word we're getting, they are not going to review that magnitude. I mean, you're talking about giving the ball back to the Cowboys at midfield right before the end of the first half. I don't know how you don't at least take a look at it to be sure, even though when it happened and the right call was made. DeLong was pleading for a review. There is no review. A minute 10 left in the half and Dallas with all three of their timeouts remaining so they can hand off if they wish and they do to Jones Julius picks up only two. So Dallas now they're going into their no huddle mode and trying to come away with some points of their own at least an opportunity to maybe tie this ball game up. Penalty flag on the play Bledsoe goes down there was movement from Torin Tucker but across from him one of the defenders outside Panthers defense number 93 five yard penalty second down it was Rucker who came across early it was Rucker who brought down Bledsoe but you're going to see some movement by Torin Tucker as well yeah he starts leaning back on his heels and that's what that's what will happen when you're going up against a pass rusher with the ability of a guy like Mike Rucker and and a great pass rusher one of the reasons why Mike Rucker is such a great pass rusher is those are the things that he's keyed on as soon as a defense or an offensive tackle starts to move at all he's firing off the ball Well, that's a bad call and a good break for Dallas Jones has a first down as he gets it to the 44 and Dallas will spend a timeout 39 seconds left and Dallas has two timeouts remaining. Well, what a turnaround that was on that call just because it wiped away a sack. Gave Dallas have a bad it's like a comedian five. waiting for the rim shot, you know? Pass is complete. That's Keyshawn Johnson. And Johnson makes a move out of bounds at the 25 yard line. The Cowboys are well within Cundiff's range for a field goal. And now they have loftier ambitions trying to take their first lead of the day. Boy, we've seen some bad tackling. We've seen it both from the Dallas Cowboys when they were trying to tackle goings. And now we see it from Ken Lucas. If you're going to be one on one, you've got to drive through the receiver. And he was unable to do that. And so Keyshawn now was able to pick up extra yards and immediately put his team in field goal range. 33 seconds left. Two timeouts left for Dallas. Pressure from Peppers. And Peppers eventually brings down Drew Bledsoe. Bledsoe got it back to the line of scrimmage, but he ha he's hanging on to the ball forever. Well, that's a problem. I thought the offensive line there did a, did a good job. In fact, last week I thought they did a good job at times as well. They block him down low, Peppers. And you've got to know when you've got a back on Julius Peppers, you're not going to be afforded a lot of time to try to survey the field and find an open receiver. He's got plenty of time to get the ball out. Now, once you don't find anybody, you've either got to change as your approach as an offensive play caller. Dallas has only one timeout left at second and 10, 19 seconds on the clock. Bledsoe underneath Keyshawn Johnson's got to get out of bounds he does inside the 20 and they throw a flag at the end of the play it's a face mask it's a face mask against Carolina and that will be enough for a first down Pressing the face mask defense number 27 five yard penalty first down so now with 12 seconds left the ball will be inside the 15 and Dallas gets to keep a timeout. Well, Bledsoe's able to get the ball to Keyshawn Johnson, and it's Marlon McCree. Actually, it was Gamble. They, they called it on Marlon McCree, the safety, but it was actually Chris Gamble who came up and had the face mask. So now you've got the missed tackle by Ken Lucas, which allowed Dallas to get more yards. Then you come back and you get the face mask by Chris Gamble that tacked on extra yardage, too. Crowd tries to get back in it, 12 seconds on the clock. 
Bledsoe under pressure throws it away. Now there are seven seconds remaining and Bill Parcells is going to bring his field goal unit onto the field. This is earlier. He's talking about when he called the timeout. He's saying with 31 seconds left and that's so valuable now because even though it's only second down with seven seconds left on the clock they are not going to chance something that's a little hard to believe here's a 32 yard try from Cundiff. No good. Cundiff's troubles continue. The turnover forced by the rookie DeMarcus Ware. Setting up that chance and after watching last weekend Keyshawn Johnson screaming at Cundiff in Washington. Here's Cundiff hitting a knuckleball and missing from 32 yards out and it's still Carolina up by three. You know take a look and just see whether or not the snap was very good and, and what about the hold snaps perfect holds down laces away and he just yanked it. You know I thought maybe he slipped with his plant foot but that didn't appear to be the case either. And, you know I think the ball might have been tipped right in the interior part of the line it might have been Julius Peppers his right hand you see the left hand higher than the right but I believe Peppers got his right hand on that kick. Let's watch again. Peppers in the middle of the defensive line look at his right hand off his fingertips kick no good Carolina cheering themselves a spot in the playoffs and on the other side if they can get a win and Tampa Bay loses today for the second time in the last three years they will win the NFC South good return by Thompson of 31 yards and let's check in with Pam Oliver. Hey Joe, Bill Parcells laments a couple of things from his teams. The plays that got away, the plays they failed to make, the fumble and the missed field goal. He said we should be winning this game, but since we're not, we're about to see what we are made of. As for the Carolina Panthers, John Fox is preaching one thing for the second half, consistency on both sides of the ball. Back to you. All right, Pam, thank you. From their own 36, that's where the Cowboys begin. Down by three. Fake the toss, then eventually get it into the arms of Julius Jones. Kind of an odd looking play with what Bledsoe was doing, trying to pitch it, and a loss of one on that play. Yeah, I'm, not, I'm with you, Joe. I'm not sure, <laughs> I'm not sure what Dallas was, was trying to accomplish on that play. As you said, it looked like initially it was going to be a fake toss. And then Bledsoe realized that there wasn't anything else he could go do with the ball, and he went back and pitched it anyway. Second down and 11. And pressure. Bledsoe lost the ball. And the Carolina Panthers fighting for it at the bottom of the pile, but Dallas keeps it. Terry McCauley indicates that Dallas keeps it and a problem with the center quarterback exchange. A ton of pressure by Buckner on that play. Well you think back to last week against Washington the first possession of the second half they fumbled and now all of a sudden the first possession of this half and they don't get the quarterback center exchange and the Cowboys were fortunate just to get back on it. Brings up third down and 12. And off to Julius Jones Witherspoon on the stop. And it's fourth down. And what we've seen both from Bill Parcells as well as John Fox and Dan Henning, the offensive coordinator for the Carolina Panthers, very conservative today in third and long because they know that they're going up against good defensive teams. And the fact that they have good defenses themselves, they don't want to start trying to throw the football at third and 13, third and 15, and create something bad. A punt in today's game is a good point. Matt McBriar hits another ugly punt. Unless you punt it like that. Takes a great Dallas roll and it's going to be tapped. Smith 
Smith still with only one catch, and Deshaun Foster is knocked down by Marcus Spears. A gain of three. First touchdown for Karandov. And immediately Bill Parcells was asking if that was blocked, and it was. Handoff is to Foster. And Foster picks up five, a couple yards short of a first down. And I'll tell you what, Joe, coming into this game, this Carolina offense had, had really been struggling running the football, you know, as it relates to what they've done all season long. Now, coming off of their win last week against the Saints, that was their most productive day running the football. But, you know, they only averaged coming in 3.2 yards per carry, which is the second worst in the National Football League. And they're worse than that today. You know, I know as far as trying to take a lot of the pressure off of Jake DeLong, They've got to be able to run the football better than what they've had because they've not gotten anything out of it here today. Third down and two, and they're going to throw it. Pass is broken up. Davis got in front of Ricky Prohl. You know, I think a part of the reason when you're talking about third and two, and they're throwing the ball 15 yards down the field, a lot of it goes back to what I said just a moment ago. There's not a lot of confidence right now that Deshaun Foster in this offensive line is going to be able to create some of the running lanes in order to pick up a third and short. Fourth punt of the day for Jason Baker. Snap a little high. Baker hits it. Newman from inside the 30. Got to the 30 and then knocked down by the nine. Julius Jones right through the middle of this Carolina defense. Gets 15 yards and a first down for Dallas. Tell you what, you've got to be pretty impressed with the job that Julius Jones is having today. And his first game over 100 yards rushing and a pretty good hole there on the inside. And that's right over Andre Girard at right guard. And you know, we came into the game talking about the burst that he had shown early. And, and he's got it again here in the second half. He's also got his first 100 yard day on the ground. That was the rookie Thomas Davis coming up to make the hit. Julius Jones picks up two. So coming into this game, Marion Barber was the only back that had gone over 100 on the year. Now Julius Jones has done it. He's up to 106. You know, this offensive line, when, when things are not going well, and certainly they've been heavily criticized, and, you know, we talked about Marco Rivera not being in, and, and yet for them to come into this game against this opponent defensively in Carolina and be able to run the football in which they have, that's pretty impressive. Second down and eight, Julius Jones, Will Witherspoon again with help from Gamble. And it's third down coming up, third and long for Dallas. You know, Larry Allen, a 12-year veteran, he's the left guard, and he's going to pull. And one of the things that linebackers, when they know that he's coming up on them, they just want to dodge and miss him. And so you saw Witherspoon, who showed him the shoulder, and then was able to come underneath that block and still make the play. Because if Larry Allen gets his body on you, it's over. Witherspoon with six tackles on the day. He made that last one. It's third and eight. Out of the shotgun. Peppers coming off the edge, and the pass incomplete. And a flag comes in from the referee. Holding offense. Number 77. Phillies decline. Fourth down. That's Torin Tucker, and it is fourth down. To answer your question honestly, absolutely I'll come to some races this year. And I'm more excited about that DLP technology from Texas Instruments than I am the 96 car. The 96 car is great, but when my TV looks great, then that's that's affecting me. We'll get you a DLP big screen. I've got one. You'd love it. We'll get everybody one. Yeah, 8.44 left in this third quarter, and McBriar hits the punt of his life all the way into the end zone. Some to work up by three, eight and a half to go third quarter. I'll tell you what, Joe, that wind will not affect Jake DeLome. I've seen him throw, and he's got one of the strongest arms in the league. Not a lot of people know that. Handoff here is to Foster. And Deshaun gets it up to the 24, picked up four. And we watch the Davises. One for Dallas, one for Carolina. Keith and Thomas getting into it at the end of that punt.
<laughs> K. Steve Smith wanted to get in on the fun. Roy Williams made Steve think better of it. Happy holiday. Second and six. Fleet flicker. Here's your big arm down the middle and the pass. Incomplete. Good coverage on Steve Smith. It was Terrence Newman who's been busy and in the pocket of Smith since this day began. Down there for Dallas. Well, he's been in his pocket, but he's also been consistently getting safety help. I mean, every single play, whether it's a running down or a passing down, Dallas has had two defenders. Now they try to go with the flea flicker and hopefully open up Steve Smith, but ball's a little bit late on the throw and, and quite honestly, not, not a lot of room there to get the ball in. Now Nick Goings is the tailback. There's Smith at the bottom of your screen. DeLone on third down going for Carter and it's broken up covered downfield by Jock Reeves. Reeves who has taken Offense, the place number 76 penalties decline fourth down. There was a hold back at the front end of the play but on the back end it's Reeves making the play playing in place of the injured Anthony Henry. Well I thought earlier that Drew Carter did a good job of going up for the football here you can't leave your arms down when you've got a height advantage on somebody if you leave your feet and go up and catch the ball at the highest point that's one that Drew Carter brings in now he hasn't played a lot of football that's something he'll learn. Fair catch called for by Newman and he muffs it. Penalty flag is down on the play and Dallas still has the football. Well, the official got in there right away and decided that it was Dallas Cowboys ball because again if you let these two players go out the, the bottom of the pile illegal block in the back receiving team number 88 10 yard penalty first down timeout I guess that penalty was cold they haul it down that might be our first ever <laughs> I think you're right <laughs> they plant those on Monday Night Football that might be a legitimate one. on first down and toss to Julius Jones running left and Jones picks up four penalty flag comes in at the end of that play and by the way we'll get the call from McCauley during the break after the muffed punt personal foul unnecessary roughness offense number 79 blow to the head 15 yard penalty first down that's Rob Petiti who's guilty of the blow to the head during the break the official Terry McCauley got on the mic and clarified they forgot who was on offense and who was on defense so while they called an illegal block in the back as you look at this one at the top of the screen that little shove to the face of Chris Gamble got the flag a big 15 yard penalty didn't look like there was much there they picked up the flag on the punt return. They don't pick that one up, and it's marked back at the 26. On first down, a handoff to Julius Jones, and he's out to the 29-yard line. So on the punt, just to clarify, because it was something we talked about going to break, they called the block in the back, but they called it on the defense. So they picked it up. The drive started pretty good field position at the 38 after the 15-yard penalty. And the run by Julius Jones. It's at the 29 yard line. Second down and 22. Dropped off on a screen to Julius Jones. We haven't seen that much today. And Jones is wrestled out of bounds by Marlon McCree after he picked up 13 yards. Well, again, that's just another way for Dallas to try to neutralize this pass rush of the Carolina Panthers. And you know, here you are at second and long. Go with a screen play, and it was set up very, very well. You've got three blockers out in front. You got Larry Allen, and then Andre Gerard comes in late. Al Johnson doing a good job kicking out. And now all of a sudden you go from second and long to third and a manageable distance. Third and five. <laughs> Penalty flags before the snap. It's a false start. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, number 77. Five yard penalty, third down. That's Torrin Tucker again. 
You know, and that's the part that's just so frustrating, and that's what makes it very difficult for a play caller, whether you're Bill Parcells or Sean Payton, the offensive coordinator, that all of a sudden you have a good play and you get yourself in a manageable position. There's a lot of plays that you can call from when you're talking about third and five. That list gets very small when it's third and ten. Atlanta is leading at Tampa Bay by three. The Carolina Panthers keeping an eye on that score. It's third down and ten. Bledsoe throws for Keyshawn Johnson first down. Out of bounds at the 43 of Carolina. That's his first 20 yard reception in eight games. You know they're helping out with Julius Peppers here on the offensive right side. They keep Dan Campbell in and him along with Rob Petiti neutralize him. Now on the other side it's surprising to me that Ken Lucas who is covering Keyshawn Johnson is threatened by Keyshawn Johnson going by him. You see Ken Lucas continuing to back up and give him cushion where Keyshawn Johnson it's been a long time since he's run by somebody. Handoff is to Julius Jones. Jones looking for the end zone. Dives. Touchdown. Down there, Jones. The Dallas Cowboys have their first lead of the day in a game that they desperately need here in the second to last weekend of the regular season. And Joe, I think you could hear a lot of those offensive players when they were congratulating him at the end of that play, saying, You're back, you're back, because nobody's wanted this guy to get back involved in this offense more than his teammates have, and what a time to do it. A great hole by the offensive line and good explosion by Julius Jones. A 43 yard touchdown run. Cundiff makes it a four point game. Two rushing touchdowns today for Julius Jones. Dallas running backs had gone since November 20th since they had run one in. Bledsoe applauding, and so are Dallas fans. But Julius Jones has had a breakthrough day here on Christmas Eve. 61 yard drive capped by the 43 yard touchdown run by Julius Jones his second rushing touchdown of the day. And the offensive line has protected Drew Bledsoe well enough and opened up some running lanes for Julius Jones the Cowboys have their first lead. Robertson. Out to the 28. Back to the touchdown run by Julius Jones as another fight breaks out on the field after that kickoff return. But it's a good job up front of getting some push. We saw Al Johnson, the center, collapse the pocket interior wise that gave Julius Jones some room to run. And you know, Keyshawn Johnson, who also had a key reception on that drive, I tell you, this Dallas team offensively is where they've had most of their problems. If they're able to get Julius Jones going and he can continue to run the football the way he is today. This team if they are able to get into the playoffs could pose some problems. 444 left in the third quarter. Carolina playing from behind for the first time today. Passes to the tight end Mangum. Stays in bounds and gets into Dallas territory. Knocked out by Brady James after a catch and run of 24 yards. And Jake DeLome, he was trying to go down the field to Drew Carter. Again, this is the speed guy, and he runs right by Roy Williams, but there was enough there with Aaron Glenn that DeLome did not take a chance. Now he comes underneath to Chris Mangum, and so many times you think that these receivers are just going to run out of bounds. Brady James thought that, thought that he could just knock him out. Mangum makes him miss and is able to get more yards. Handoff is to Deshaun Foster down inside the 45, very close to the 43, picked up four. Greg Ellis on the tackle. Under four minutes to play in the third quarter. You know, it's interesting as you look at Carolina offensively and, and how they're trying to move the football. Of course, they're trying to run the ball, which is what they always do. They're not running it particularly well, which is not a real big surprise. 
But then in the past, they've been able to at least come to Steve Smith and get him going. Well, today, he's got the one reception when he ran that in route. But since then, they've gone to him a couple more times. They've just been unable to free him up because of the coverage by Dallas. Panthers just get it away. And the pass is to Colbert. Lost the football incomplete. Incomplete pass. Colbert did not secure it. Eventually lost it, and it's third and six. And right now, Steve Smith is starting to get frustrated. He comes to the inside to try to get away from the double teams. He's running a crossing route. Nobody picked him up. And had DeLome have seen it and got the ball into his hands, he could have got some good yardage. And as you can tell, Steve Smith is not accustomed to being this late in the ball game, not having had more opportunities. Came in with 93 catches. He has one today. DeLome has it knocked out of his hand. It's where again. Smith gets the football. Smith with room to run. Newman wrestles him down short of a first down. That's one way to get the ball in Steve Smith's hands. And now a flag comes down on the sideline. Cowboys are indicating it's against Steve Smith for his reaction at the end of that play. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense, number 89. Number 89 is ejected. Wow. 15 yard penalty. The down counts. Fourth down. It's fourth down. It's a punt coming from Carolina, but the bigger part of it, Steve Smith has been ejected. Yeah, and what exactly did he do? I mean, normally here's where you would fall on the ball. Steve Smith, the ball comes right into his hands, and he he's able to pick it up. A good job by him. It looked like he may have an opportunity to pick up the first down, but look at the end of the play and see what exactly happened that caused him to get thrown out. Well, it obviously happened after that. We've got to cover the punt. And if we can, on the sideline, he went up to the line judge and by grabbing him around the waist and saying something. I, tell you, I, I don't agree with that. Now, you're not supposed to grab an official, but he's not grabbing him in a very violent way. He's just trying to get his attention. The question is, what did he say? And according to that official, it was violent enough. The punt ends up in the end zone. So Steve Smith has been ejected. That's the headline at the end of that last drive by Carolina. Two minutes, 51 seconds left in this third quarter. First of all, the tackle by Newman. And then it looked like there might have been a little extra leg from Roy Williams at the end of the play right there. Smith gets up, grabs the official, and the instant he put his hands on the official, out goes Steve Smith. I don't agree with the call, Joe. I mean, I don't, obviously, I don't know what was said, but I don't think you kick Steve Smith out of the game based on what we just saw. Handoff is to Julius Jones. He is out to the 26, and the officiating tape that we get, they have made it perfectly clear that you do not intentionally go lay your hands on an official, and they just won't put up with it. I can understand why. With the game being as violent as it is, being down there with some guy padded up as much as these guys are coming at you. I say throw a flag, but I wouldn't kick a guy like him out of the game. Second down and four. Julius Jones adding to his big day out to the 30. He's going to be about a half yard short of a first down. And I think right now for this Carolina defense, it's, it's really time for them to be able to step up. You know, they've given up a lot of yards this Dallas Cowboys offense. Now all of a sudden you have your best player offensively just get ejected from the ball game. It's paramount that they're able to stop Dallas on this drive give the ball back to their offense and not have the Carolina Panthers down anymore. 
Bledsoe took it, but it's going to be another false start against Dallas. False start. Offense. Number 79. Five-yard penalty. Third down. This time now. A blitz. Down goes Bledsoe in the arms of Witherspoon. And there is that defensive stand you were talking about from Carolina. <laughs> You know, I'm going to reevaluate this Will Witherspoon. I, I said I'm not suggesting that he's a great linebacker. Well, I'm saying he is a great linebacker. I've seen him make too many plays here today. He comes right up the middle. Marion Barber can't get to him in time because he timed the snap so well. But we have called his name a lot here today. He's made a lot of big plays in this game. So now it's McBriar to punt. And it's Gamble waiting deep, and McBriar hits a good punt. Campbell from just inside the 30. Seconds left in this third quarter. Dallas up by four. Deshaun Foster out to the 41. Picked up three. Let's check in with Pam Oliver. Hey Joe, I followed Steve Smith down through the tunnel as he went into the locker room after being ejected. He was obviously very heated. He ended up in front of a television set outside of the locker room and he listened to Troy's comments and he agreed with every word. He felt he should not be kicked out. He also said he only touched the ref to get his attention. Back to you. So there you go. You have a fan in Steve Smith. Well, Steve agrees with me that I'm right, right? Yeah. <laughs> So Steve Smith gets kicked out of the game for grabbing the official. Second down here for Carolina and Deshaun Foster is out to midfield with another Panther first down. Newman on the tackle. And that's it for the third quarter. Good game. Dallas that not only the Panthers have but maybe any team has on offense. Steve Smith has been ejected. It's first down at midfield for Carolina down by four. DeLone. Gonna flip it for Prohl. Good coverage downfield, and Roy Williams picks it off. Interception by Roy Williams. His third of the season. And Williams is slow to get up. Uh, he looks like he's in a great deal of pain right now. And you know, Jake DeLome, he he's been able to make a lot of plays here today throwing the ball down the field he's got 190 yards on only seven completions but on this one not a good decision there are three defenders down there on the play and Roy Williams make a makes a heck of an athletic catch to intercept that ball but they're trying to go down the field to Ricky Prohl and Dallas even with Steve Smith out of the game they have continued to play coverage. Look like the right ankle of Roy Williams got rolled over a little bit hobbling around on the sideline as the handoff is to Julius Jones and Jones will take it out to the 18 yard line a gain of four. So they look at the I believe right ankle of Roy Williams. That's the left ankle. As they check on him on the sidelines, it's second down and six. Julius Jones, first down. What a day it's been for Julius Jones. Cowboys and their fans have been waiting for this day since the season began and Jones up to 174 on the day. Just picked up a first down. Gets it again making more people miss stays on his feet another first down. You know Joe this is the type of runner that, that Dallas fans had grown accustomed to seeing last year and then early this year. Watch the penetration by Carolina, but Julius Jones is able to make them miss. 
and then still find the hole within that defense and pick up some yardage. I think when you talk about the great backs over the history, they always have the ability to make the first guy in the hole miss them. That's something that we saw last year from Julius Jones, and that's certainly something that we're seeing here today. Now it's Barbara getting it and trying out the right side. Peppers on the tackle. Barber got three. Let's go for a game break and check in with JB. Hey, Joe Buck. Patrick Ramsey in for the injured Mark Brunel, a knee injury, questionable return. Hooking up with Santana Moss. That remains a constant. Third touchdown of the day for Santana Moss. Redskins out in front by a 28 20, 255 left in the third. Back to Joe, Troy, and Pam. All right, James Brown, 10 and 4. That's the record the Giants bring with them. Redskins trying to end the season by winning their final five games at eight and six. Peppers rips down Bledsoe. A loss of 15 yards on that sack by Julius Peppers. You know, you get a little something going offensively, and these are the types of playmakers that Carolina has and Julius Peppers just goes right by Rob Petiti and slings Bledsoe to the ground and Bledsoe gets up and just stares right at Rob Petiti knowing that that was his man. Now that's a tall order for a rookie and it doesn't matter that it's his 15th game to start when you're going up against one of the premier pass rushers and Julius Peppers. That's difficult to block him one on one. Again, Bill Parcells, Sean Payton, they stay conservative on third and long. They hand to Barber. Barber gets it up to the 30. And Matt McBriar, the beleaguered punter of the Dallas Cowboys, comes back onto the field. And I think the fact, and we've pointed it out throughout this game on third and long, that the Cowboys as well as the Panthers have decided to be conservative in their play call. And right now, Parcells is saying he doesn't think Carolina without Steve Smith can go the distance moving the football against his own defense. McBriar hits it. Pretty good punt. Campbell is waiting for it with Steve Smith out of the game. Gamble. Smith, the NFL's leading receiver. They're down by four. Play action. Setting up a screen. They do so for Foster. And Foster is brought down from behind by Jason Ferguson. Eight of four. You know, we talked about what Carolina was doing, or excuse me, what Dallas was doing defensively while Steve Smith was in the game. Well, they're continuing to play the same coverage, even with him out of the game. And what they're doing is they're playing two deep safeties and trying to stop the run with seven man. So if you're the Carolina Panthers, you have to be able to run the football against that front. That's the weakness of this defense, running the football against them. You can see the two safeties deep here. And that's the two deep. They put it back up, and the pass is caught by Carter. Carter is brought down at the marker. It depends on the spot as to whether it's a first down or third and inches, and they're going to bring the change out. Meanwhile, Troy, for a team like Dallas, it's had a terrible time trying to stop the run over the past four or five games. They have held Carolina at only 63 yards on the ground. And that's part of the problem right now or I should say that's part of the dilemma for Carolina in that they know that they should be running the football against this defensive front but they've been ineffective in doing so so they're forced to throw the ball into coverage. It's third down and that much. And I don't mean necessarily throw the ball into coverage to where there's double teams and triple teams like what Jake did on the previous possession. But when you've got a defense that playing too deep coverage it's very difficult to effectively throw the football and move the ball against that if you're not able to move the football on the ground. Remember Roy Williams hobbled off after that interception. Roy Williams is not in the defensive lineup for Dallas Willie Pyle. The backup safety is in there on third down and less than one. the ball off and it's a first down for Carolina Foster carries it picked up two under 10 to play and a first down just outside their own 35 for Jake DeLone who by the way 
has his quarterback rating go up this season when the game gets into the fourth quarter his passer rating up to ninety three point eight in the final period that's sixth best in the NFL last year really the year before he really proved to be a very good fourth quarter quarterback on first down handoff is to Foster and with all that misdirection and trickery a gain of only one to go back Steve Smith has been ejected after picking up a fumble getting wrestled down by Newman on the sideline he grabbed the line judge and that forced the flag in his ejection and the bottom line is as a player you put your hands on the official no matter what your intent is and this crew is saying you are gone and I don't blame him. Delong fires Carter drops it goes up to get it and could not bring it down Aaron Glenn on the coverage. Boy, that was a tough one for Drew Carter because the ball's right into his hands. And I know in talking with Jake DeLone the other day when he was telling me about Drew Carter because he's a guy who hasn't played much, he said he's got exceptional hands. In fact, he's one of those few guys that does a good job of catching the ball away from his body. And you could tell he was trying to get his hands out, trying to make the catch. And it just went right through his hands. But had he been able to make that one, it would have been good for the first down. So without their three time Pro Bowl strong safety in the lineup the Cowboys watch Jake DeLome call timeout on third. Then they win the NFC South for the second time in the last three years. Right now the Buccaneers losing by three. DeLome fires off his back foot downfield. There's a lot of contact but no flag. Glenn down there covering Drew Carter. And it's fourth down. Sorry, Joe. A little surprising by Dallas bringing pressure on third and long, giving up one on one on the outside. Again, Drew Carter, a guy that can run. But he was unable to get by Aaron Glenn. The ball's thrown a little bit to the inside. Aaron Glenn had good position on him. But Carolina certainly had an opportunity for a big play on third and long. The punt from Baker. Great. Calls for a fair catch. Line for the Dallas Cowboys. They have the football and a four point lead. It's first time that a team has racked up over 300 total yards against this Carolina defense in the last 10 games as the handoff is to Julius Jones. Picks up two. Rucker on the stop for the Panthers. Second and eight. And Newman, who is in on offense, checks out. We've seen that three weeks in a row now the Dallas Cowboys offensively using Terrence Newman and he has yet to get the ball. Yeah, I was going to say and one of these times they're going to actually give it to him. Atlanta still leading by three over the Bucks. On second down they roll Bledsoe out and Keyshawn Johnson can't make a one handed grab it's third and eight. You know I would say this is a fairly important possession for Dallas. I mean when you're considering the fact that they're up by four a little over seven minutes left in the game if they were able to string together a possession here take time off the clock certainly if they're able to come away with a touchdown the way in which this Dallas defense has shut down Carolina offensively is a pretty good sign for them but they came out ran the ball and then don't get the completion on second down and now once again they're facing third and long. The Bucs have just tied Atlanta 17 17. Bledsoe over the middle to Witten. A penalty flag on the completion. Yeah, they got Torn Tucker, Joe, on Mike Rucker. I think there are two fouls on this play. They've got a pass interference against Dallas. There are three flags down on the field right now. There are two fouls on the play. Holding, offense. Number 77. That penalty's declined. Pass interference. Offense. Number 82. Half the distance to the goal. Third down. Well, there's Witten in the slot working against Ricky Manning. Well, I didn't see much there. You know, it's 
Of course, Tucker there at the top of your screen, number 77, the left tackle, and he just he just yanks him down right by the shoulder pads there at the breastplate. Yank down Mike Rucker. So if you didn't like the call on the offensive pass interference, clearly that was a hold on Tucker, and it's third down and 17. It looks like they're going to throw here. No, nope. a blitz. They hand off to Barber, and it's fourth down. Barber brought down by Davis, a gain of 10, and it's time for another Cowboy punt. Well, you know, I mean, Bill Parcells came into this game saying we've got to be able to manage the game, and being able to manage it with under seven minutes in the fourth quarter means that you've got to have a pretty tight ball game, and that's certainly what they've got. And again, true to form, on third and long, we see the Cowboys decide to run the ball and punt and now rely once again on their defensive play. The punt by McBriar. And it will roll to a stop at the Carolina 36. That's where they'll take score in the top right hand corner of your screen. 17 17 Atlanta Tampa Bay here at 17 13 Dallas. Under six minutes to play. Carolina with a football starting at their own 36. DeLong, Mangum, the tight end, out across the 40 to the 41. Shanley and James on the stop, a gain of five. You know, you mentioned it earlier, Joe, as far as Jake DeLong, and you know he plays his best football in the fourth quarter, and you know he gets into these types of situations, and I, I think Dan Henning, the offensive coordinator, probably described him best. I mean, he's not a guy when you go out and you watch practice and go through seven on seven drills he doesn't impress you and you don't really think he's much of a player but when he gets in the, the games like this when he's down and has to make plays he has an uncanny ability to come through with those plays. second down and five they toss it to Foster and that's where making another play a couple of things that a that's probably the reason why he was six years of backup in New Orleans and now he's a Pro Bowl quarterback. And two on the other side when Bill Parcells was talking about I don't know if my team's old enough mature enough to win a big game in Carolina he was talking about guys like DeMarcus Ware maybe even Julius Jones in his second year DeMarcus Ware has played a brilliant game here today. Yeah he has I mean some of these young players DeMarcus Ware as you said he's had his best game in over a couple of months and you need your best players to play big in big games and certainly for Dallas this is a big game. An offensive meeting on the sideline for Dallas. Meanwhile, it's third down and five in the pass. What a catch by Mangum. And the big tight end has a big Carolina first down. Well, that was a heck of a catch. You're right, Joe. I mean, the ball was laid out. If they don't pick that one up, then they're going to be punting. Now they're going into a no huddle situation. Why, I'm not exactly sure. But DeMar DeMarcus Ware coming off the edge. He had Travell Wharton moving. I mean, he had an opportunity to get in there and possibly get the ball away from Jake again. Big completion on third down. Now on first down, it's Deshaun Foster. Gets away from Ferguson. Gets into Dallas territory. Good run after the catch. A gain of nine, nine and a half. Pretty good job there by Deshaun Foster protecting the football because as soon as you start making those types of moves in the open field the defenders immediately start trying to take the ball away from you You see him moving it to his outside arm which is the right thing to do and now the defenders come in and try to strip it second down and one handoff is to Goins and he's down to the Dallas 41 with a Carolina first down and now Jake is elected to huddle the group up. And so they come out with a no huddle for two plays after they picked up the first down to Mangum. And then they pick up the first down here and now Jake DeLone wants to huddle the group up. Sometimes going with the no momentum change for your offense which can help you and it has for Carolina. On first down play action DeLone fires behind goings a little and he's ridden out of bounds. By Brady James. Gain of five. Let's go to JB for a game break. Hey, Joe Buck, as you well know, Washington controls its own postseason 
hopes indeed with two victories there in. Take a look at Clinton Portis. 19 of his 85 rushing yards on that touchdown run. Washington expands the lead to 15, 12, 29 left in regulation. Back to Joe Buck and Troy Aikman. Thank you, JB. Here at second down and five for Carolina. Trailing by four. DeLong. Pro. Ricky Pro. Touchdown. is three you know Joe how many times do we see Ricky Prohl I mean not a guy they use a great deal but it seems like whenever they need a big play if it's not Steve Smith it's Ricky Prohl now Steve Smith not in the ball game and Rick has got more out of his career than he ever thought he would coming out of Wake Forest and he's been a first down machine whether it's been with the Cardinals with the Bears with the Rams with the Panthers and he scored some big touchdowns in his career. Tyson Thompson trying to turn in a good return. Thompson is out across the 40. A pretty good tackle there at the end. But Tyson Thompson setting this offense up in great field position, only needing a field goal in order to tie this game up. 40 yard return by the rookie. Terry Glenn back in the lineup for Dallas. Bledsoe fires and he finds Terry Glenn. He's got a first down inside the Carolina 44. Ricky Manning Jr. on the stop, a completion of 15 yards. I tell you, that shows you all you need to know about the arm strength that Drew Bledsoe still has. In a sideline route, if that ball's not out there as quickly as what it was, Ricky Manning has the ability to undercut that throw. A perfect throw by Drew Bledsoe to Terry Glenn. A blitz, a handoff. Julius Jones lowers his shoulder, runs through McCree, picks up three. And that will take this game to the two minute warning. For Dallas, two minutes left. The ball at the Carolina 40. Bledsoe slings it, completes it to Keyshawn Johnson. And he's down to the 21 yard line well within field goal range for Cundiff. But right now the Cowboys are thinking about getting it into the end zone in a game they need to win to stay alive in the playoff chase in the NFC. Yeah, and with two timeouts there's plenty of time on the clock and Dallas doing the right thing and huddling up knowing that there's no real urgency at least as of yet. And off Julius Jones to the 20 picked up a yard. And now the Dallas Cowboys are going to use their first time out. Now Cundiff has been no sure bet. He missed from 32 but that came on a tipped field goal attempt right at the end of the first half. Coming into this game four of six and he made a career best and franchise record 56 yard field goal against Detroit six weeks ago in his first game back as the kicker for the Cowboys. Now you go back and you take a look at that completion in the middle to Keyshawn Johnson and it it just surprises me that Carolina defensively this is a secondary that's very talented all across the board the corners the safeties and yet they're not challenging Keyshawn Johnson we talked a little bit about it earlier Keyshawn Johnson's not someone who's really going to run by anybody so because of that you're able to crowd him a little bit more than you can say a Terry Glenn but they've not done it. It would be a 38 yard field goal try from here but it's second down and nine. Bledsoe pump fakes throws corner of the end zone incomplete and it was Lucas with better position on the ball than Terry Glenn. Now it's third and nine on third and long today the Cowboys have been very conservative 
And here they are within field goal range, a minute 18 left. We'll see how daring they want to be. Yeah, and I've got to believe that you would throw it here trying to pick up the first down. I mean, we know Billy Cundiff has had some problems. Bill Parcells cannot possibly feel confident that, B that Billy Cundiff can make this without any doubt. Normally you would. So I've got to believe they're going to try to pick it up. A blitz. Marion Barber won't get the first down. Tackled by Lucas. And now the field goal unit will come on by in trying to pick up that first down. 33 yard try. Cundiff missed it, but there's a flag down. A penalty flag is down. And it's against Carolina for running into Billy Cundiff. We have a new audience joining us right here, and you're about to get an important call from our referee, Terry McCauley. Running into the kicker, defense, number 90. Five-yard penalty, first down. The five-yard penalty for running into the kicker is enough for a first down for Dallas. I don't know how Julius Peppers missed that ball. You know, he was to the right of Billy Cundiff. If he comes right at the ball, I don't know that there's any way that Julius Peppers does not block the ball. Now, because he doesn't touch it, you cannot then run into the kicker. It was not the personal foul variety. Peppers is saying, I touched it. It may have glanced off Peppers. And that should be a booth review. Again, they should at least look at it. And now. Second charge timeout, Carolina. John, It'll be a 30 second timeout. John Fox came running down to call the timeout to give the booth a chance to look at that. Well, you take a look now, and where Julius Peppers comes in, does he get a hand or anything on the ball? And I don't know how you look at that. He might have. Somebody might have gotten a hand on it. But I don't know, based on that look, that you can definitively say that that's what happened. Here's the other part of it. It was not the personal foul variety. It was just running into the kicker, but it was fourth and four. So the five yard penalty was enough. The for play will now. be reviewed. And now they will review it. Any piece of that ball on the way, and is there indisputable evidence to overturn the call on the field? We're going to get the call right now. After review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Dallas. So because Peppers and Lucas ran into the kicker, Kunda, the five-yard penalty gives Dallas a first down just died in perfect position to block that field goal attempt that neither one of them were able to get a hand on. Handoff is to Julius Jones. Jones had his here. Instead, they toss it. Barber looked like he might throw it, and he dives. They're going to mark him out just outside the two. A yard plus shy of a first down and two plus and one. The throw for Glenn. What a catch. Touchdown, Dallas. What a catch by Terry Glenn. Now let's look at this replay. Well, he had it. He moves motions in, which then gives him some room to the sideline. And a heck of a job of securing the football. With the ball over the shoulder, one hand. Now, when does he have possession there? And then he drags the toe. And Billy Cundiff, who gets a reprieve, how relieved must he be? And we understand they're now going to review that catch in the booth. I'm with you. It looked like he secured it. And then drag that right foot. Got the toes down before he headed out of bounds. Well, at least they're reviewing it, and John Fox isn't having to call a timeout in order to get them to review it. 
A heck of a job by Terry Glenn. One being able to make the catch, but then knowing where he was on the field and getting both feet down. That's it. Receiver controlled the ball in the field of play, got both feet down. It is a touchdown as ruled on the field. For those of you just joining us, here is the most recent play that they were just looking at. A touchdown completion to Terry Glenn, a brilliant catch, but so much led up to this. We'll bring to you when we get our first chance. That puts Dallas out in front. This from Cundiff. To make it a four point lead. Arguing a call along the far sideline at the Dallas bench. Meanwhile, Carolina is down to one timeout remaining. They're going to need to get the ball into the end zone. As they will get it back here, and Robertson takes it for the Panthers. Gets it out to the 35 yard line. Well, Jake DeLone knows what he's got to do. He's got 19 seconds and one timeout. And he's got to go the length of the field and score a touchdown. DeLon steps up and throws in the direction of Nick Goings and put his team ahead and then the defense let him down and let the Cowboys go to length and score. DeLon's going to air it out. Shows off that big arm. And it's incomplete. You know, one thing that could get lost in the shuffle, at least by us, you know that the print media will jump all over it, Troy. And you'll be reading about it tomorrow. The running game. And what a difference Julius Jones made today for the Dallas Cowboys behind this beleaguered offensive line. Bill Parcell saying one more, one more defensive play. And the Cowboys will head out of Charlotte with a huge win to go to nine and six to stay alive. Well the running of Julius Jones Joe certainly has been the difference and yes Drew Bledsoe was still sacked five times but at least it kept Carolina off balance to where he could still make some throws and create some plays. Barring a defensive penalty this is the final play. DeLone can't get it to the end zone and Keyshawn Johnson almost had an interception. The Dallas Cowboys come into Charlotte and beat the Carolina Panthers by a final of 24 to 20. A fantastic battle here on Christmas Eve. And the two friends, Bill Parcells and John Fox. Fox, who was on a giant staff with Sean Payton, will head off the field. And the Dallas Cowboys get the win. 24 20 is the final. We'll come back and wrap up this day after the break. Cholesterol comes from two sources. Another look at the deciding touchdown that won it for the Dallas Cowboys. A terrific over-the-shoulder one-handed catch by Terry Glenn. 24-20, the Cowboys win it. Our UPS leaderboard looks like this and highlights Julius Jones, who had his biggest day of the season by a mile, 194 yards, Two rushing touchdowns, Terry Glenn with a game winner. So for Troy Aikman and Pam Oliver, Joe Buck, so long from Charlotte. Our producer, Richie Zients, our director, Artie Kempner, our final score, 24 20. Dallas wins it. Up next, the postgame show with JB Terry, Howie, and Jimmy.